it is a, a very expensive proposition and someone simply of raised talents is kind of unique especially in any community because uh, he was able to restore many of the statues uh, back to their pristine uh, era and look and he did a fantastic job on that so when uh, Gu uh, Juan Diego was canonized as a saint and especially as the first indigenous saint of, uh, of Mexico is that uh, we talked to Ray about doing um, an image of Juan Diego for the church to be on the opposite side of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So uh, we talked about uh, how it might, the design might take shape. And so he then went to work on it. He was able to, more than anything else, capture the uh, indigenous image, especially in the Juan Diego painting that he did of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Ray is a uh, dedicated, faithful member of this uh, parish, but more important is that I believe that his talents and skills in art preservation and a uniqueness in capturing especially the indigenous image of Juan Diego says a lot about his work, his talent, and uh, what he gives back to the community. Because again, uh, by sharing this, he shares it not only with the faithful of Our Lady of Sorrows, but also with the entire Santa Barbara community as well. So, Ray, we're back in your backyard now mm -hmm. here. Um, we've got a beautiful view of the Pacific Ocean. Um, doves alighting on the palm trees. I want to take you back to your own beginnings as an artist, though. Um, talk a little bit more about that. Well, unfortunately, we'd have to go back to smoggy LA. <laughs> um, but uh, yes, it, uh, I actually started, uh, um, as an artist, I, I started, my influence was uh, my mom getting on the phone and talking to her comadres, to be honest with you. And I would start, I would render on her telephone book, uh, stick figures. and. Uh, I guess I was probably maybe um, uh, four years old, five years mm -hmm. old back then, uh, and that that was the beginning. I, I realized I had some form of uh, passion to to communicate visually, and uh, you know it's either tagging or uh, painting. So I, I chose painting. Mm -hmm. So you're 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 doing that. Are you writing also? I mean, is that a that a, a means of expression, or is it primarily in the? Visual? I wish I could write. That's why I can. I only could paint. I can't even speak to people. I don't understand what I'm talking <laughs> about. So. Painting visually has been my best form of communication. Now, one of your early pieces is a mural. That's uh, correct. Uh, how did that come about? Um, it was, um, I was going to college at the time and I was commissioned, I actually was painting murals in high school. Um, these summer programs, they would allow me to, to uh, uh, they would save up monies in these summer programs and they would have me paint walls in elementary schools mm -hmm. when I was in high school. Um, and as I was attending, uh, after high school, I was attending San Jose State University I had a summer job back in LA uh, to paint a mural uh, for a private uh, company and it was part of a Levi Strauss exhibition in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course that painting has been whitewashed uh, since but it was painted back in 1976 and I believe I was 19 years old at the time because mm -hmm. I graduated high school when I was 17. Now you mentioned it's been whitewashed and we've talked to muralists in the past and they said that's just part of the job when you're doing a mural is sooner or later something's going to happen to it but that must be a kind of frustrating experience for you as the artist. Well, I, I think being an artist, uh, especially a visual artist, it, it, we learn to deal with ups and downs. Mm -hmm. um, rejection is probably one of the biggest, uh, one of the greatest uh, uh, situations that artists have to deal with. And, and the earlier you, you learn to deal with rejection, uh, I think the easier it would be with you as an artist, mm -hmm. as a painter uh, specifically, because painters, uh, we have to paint for ourselves. It's really difficult to paint for someone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, you might as well make yourself happy. And yet, at the same time, a, a mural is a very public piece of oh, art, sure, something that sure. everyone looks at. There seems to be a sense, as we look at your work today, that you're deeply spiritual and interior looking, yet you also want to connect with other people. Oh yes, I mean, I've learned at a, at a later age, I've learned to connect the spiritual with the human experience. Um, I'm, I'm definitely not uh, priest material, um, <laughs> and I don't want to fall in that category because uh, I'm not I'm not as devoted as you know some people are, but uh, I do feel it's important to combine both the human experience along with the spiritual experience. 
Now, after uh, you, you finished up with college, you went to work in the, the film and music video industry. Talk about some of those experiences. Well, um, I, uh, yeah, I, well, I didn't, I never graduated from college. I, I, I was a college uh, um, dropout, but uh, I moved back to Los Angeles and I got involved with the movie industry through a friend of mine by the name of uh, Romeo Carey, whose father, uh, Timothy Carey, was a character actor in Hollywood. Um, we worked with student films and I eventually uh, worked with a, um, a company by the name of Entrovision. I was a visual effects artist, uh, worked on Darkman, was credited on Darkman. Um, and uh, which was a universal picture, I believe, and I was also, I got the opportunity to work on a um, propaganda um, production, propaganda films production uh, movie, mu uh, music video of uh, Madonna. Um, it was titled Old Father. It was a black and white production. Hmm. As you finished all that, somehow you ended up here in Santa Barbara. How did that come That's about? correct. Well, I have a, 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 another creation, um, my daughter, Vanessa, and um, <laughs> Um, I was asked to come up here to help raise her, and um, that's how I ended up in this beautiful community. Mm -hmm. Now, you work for Channel 21. Uh, you are responsible for set and lighting design on so many of the programs that uh, every time somebody flips the channel, they probably see something that you came up with. That's a special kind of art. I see you before the cameras start rolling, tinkering, moving things around. What are you trying to, to get out of a look for a show? Well, I'm, I'm given direction. Um, that's, uh, I try to, to use the direction that I'm given to by our, our um, clients and, uh, um, and I incorporate my art with it as far as color and palette mm -hmm. and along with lighting. Uh, that, those are my challenges. So it's more of a three-dimensional approach um, rather than this two-dimensional surface that I'm working mm -hmm. with. But they're, they're all, they're, everything is, is uh, intertwined. There's, everything's, there's a relationship with everything that I do. Do you ever find uh, when you're working on the set design or a painting, you're thinking something specifically, ah, I've learned this here, I can apply it there, or vice versa, or are they two separate fields? I'm, I'm actually saying I did this a long time ago. Uh -huh. You know, I'm, I'm always doing something that I might have done 10 and 15 years uh -huh. ago, you know, and, and it's always, I'm always repeating it, maybe in a different format, maybe in a different way. Uh, for example, color, you know, I'm, with uh, set design, I'm, I'm painting with lights mm -hmm. rather than actual pigments. So. Uh, but there's still that relationship. There's mm -hmm. still that relationship there. Well, uh, we're going to finish the interview by looking at a couple more paintings of okay. yours. Um, talk to me about this one uh, that you translated as pushing trucks. This one piece, yes, it was uh, it was uh, the first piece that I actually sold as an exhibitor in Los Angeles uh, back in 2000, and it was the title of the painting was uh, is Puchando Trocas, um, and that's a an expression that. Uh, that um, I believe uh, was used in the in the uh, in the video in reference to small Latino males that enjoy uh, the voluptuous larger woman, and uh, uh, it's somewhat comical, but it's it's really true. I mean, I've, I've actually witnessed this, you know, living in, in the video. Now, when we look at this uh, this painting, there is a certain sense of comedy, but there's also a sense of tenderness in the composition and also in the the look. I think that these two people are exchanging. Well, of course. I mean, all. All males want that uh, passionate love by, by a woman, you know, and I was hoping to, to capture this. But unfortunately, you know, this situation takes place in the, in the little bars that, take, that are located in Avadio. And um, this is probably just a fantasy because he'll probably never know her, you know, after that night. All right. Now, behind us, we have a, a, a really big painting, beautiful painting. Talk about this one. It's, um, <clears throat> this piece here is, is titled Los Obreros, the, the workers. Um, these are um, strawberry pickers. And I was influenced uh, by the um, the fields that we have here in Oxnard, and something you know, we, living in Los Angeles, this is something we really don't uh, get to see. Um, even though most of the people that live in LA probably w one time or another ventured up here north to work out in the fields, or their parents did. Um, and here again, this is uh, this piece here. I'm I'm honoring uh, the the laborers that work out in the fields and uh, <clears throat> that are responsible for 